There we go. Let's see it come out. <laughs> there we go. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we got a live stream going. We are here at uh, Expo West, which is our showroom in Anaheim, California. Yeah, good and morning. I'm joined by Andy. My name's Christian. Um, so you guys probably see us on TCA a lot, uh, but uh, you know, today we're uh, changing it up a little bit, right, Andy? We're changing it up a little bit. We yeah. are live here at the open house that we're doing at Expo West. So we can see there's a lot of activity going around. Uh, behind us, going on behind us, we're showing machines off. Of course, we are distanced here. Yeah. Uh, if we can't be distanced, we're ready to provide masks if you want to show up here at the, at the event. Man, we uh, so we are monitoring our social media. We're, so we're live right now on Facebook and also on YouTube. Um, if you're watching, drop us a line, put a little comment in the comment section, and uh, we'll give you a shout out. Uh, so we hope that uh, some folks back in North Carolina, where yeah. we're from, are uh, are watching us uh, today and seeing it's, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, it's one o'clock on the East Coast. It's ten o'clock in the morning here. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of things that are going on. Uh, you know, we understand that in these times, especially here in Southern California, there are, there are restrictions on how many people that can be inside. So we're going to bring some demonstrations to you virtually. That's right. Um, we we have a little uh, loose schedule for for the day. Um, it's like I said, it's ten o'clock right now at about uh, ten forty-five this morning here. So one forty-five on the East Coast. We're gonna uh, Bodo Lil is gonna do a presentation on the Unimat two seventeen that we Unimat. have just, right there. Yeah, just over That's my right. uh, my left shoulder here. That's we're gonna right. we're gonna actually um, do some some different materials. You see us run wood through through molders all the time. I think we're gonna do a little presentation on running plastic or a composite material. Grab, through the, grab one of those pieces real quick. Well, here's a small piece. You can see yeah, some, of the, some of the some of the it's some sort of a PVC material, I think. So we're gonna we're gonna run that through the molder. So that'll be interesting for you. Yep. Um, a little later today, 11:15 here, which will be 2:15 on the East Coast. We're gonna uh, do a, a a little bit of a I don't know how deep we're gonna go, but a little bit of a deep dive on on CNCs in general. We have a couple of CNC machines here. We've got the 7405 Evolution. We've got one on right, the floor, right back there, just, just yep. behind me. Yep. And then the 7505 Dynastic is, is back in the back. You can see there's a couple of people looking at it over there now. Um, they'll be, uh, we'll be doing a deep dive on those machines at 11.15. Then That's at right. noon here, which will be 3 o'clock on the East Coast at noon, Bodo is going to join us again to talk a little bit about the S50. We have an S50 uh, chop saw here in the, in the showroom. We're going to go through some defecting, some, some basic, some kind of introduction into, into defecting and how the control Works with that, marking the defects and, and cutting the defects out of those uh, out of the boards. That'll be at noon here, three o'clock Eastern, and then we're going to wrap up our live streams today. One thirty here in California, uh, four thirty on the East Coast. We're going to do a deep dive. Dan uh, Hirschberger is here, and Carlos Castillo. They're going to go a little deeper in the edge banders that we have on the floor here. So, so we look forward That's to right. all of these events. But first, we need to talk. Yesterday, we promised that we were going live from Crenshaw Lumber. Yeah. So yeah, and we're gonna, we'll we'll get into that. Andy's yeah. absolutely right. We got some, a really cool video that we want to share with everybody uh, today. But real quick about the uh, about the demo schedule today. So um, so what I'll do is I'll put the schedule that Andy just mentioned on our Facebook page. All right. So if you guys want to reference that and just see when you want to tune in, you can. So I'll put that up there just in a couple minutes here. Um, it looks like we got uh, some people tuning in already. Yep. Uh, which is pretty awesome. So uh, if you're especially just, since this was not on the calendar. Right. Oh, so no, no, no. if you're just joining us, uh, yeah. yeah, welcome. Uh, we're streaming live here at Expo West, which is the Wine and Culture showroom in Anaheim, California. Uh, we have an open house event uh, today and tomorrow. And uh, it's pretty cool. We got some folks here. We're going to be demoing some machines. We got, um, as Andy was saying, we got a full schedule. Yeah. Uh, uh, for today, for live streams, I'm going to put that on Facebook in just a little bit, so uh, you guys can reference that. We're also streaming on YouTube. All right. So if you're watching us there, welcome. And uh, yeah. So. And if you miss these, we'll we'll have them up later, so you'll be able to see those all on Facebook right. and on YouTube. Yep. That's right. So okay, so as you were mentioning, yeah. Andy, yesterday, yeah, we promised. You want to tell everybody where did yeah. we go yesterday? We went to Crenshaw Lumber, and and we were absolutely prepared and expecting to come to you live with the tour. Yeah. Uh, Crenshaw is a very impressive place, and it's more of an old school kind of uh, California 
uh, manufacturing location. Um, it really shows how it, you guys on the East Coast, I think, will be super uh, excited or interested to see what how things are different here on the on the West Coast. The challenge was that their their campus is uh, 12 acres, I think they said, yeah, right? Yeah, they said 12 acre campus. And, and yep. walking around, we were also in an area where Verizon didn't seem to have very good cell signal, <laughs> so we couldn't even go to data, but, the, so but we, there certainly wasn't Wi-Fi available. We could not stream live walking yeah. around their yard, so but that's okay. Apologize, we told you around four o'clock yesterday afternoon to look for that, and, and we, right. weren't, we weren't able to, to go live. So what we've done is we got back here, we've, we've processed the video, we're gonna uh, we're gonna show that video to you guys. That'll be our first demonstration of today. Is gonna show the video right. that we shot yesterday afternoon at yep. Crenshaw Lumber. Yeah, that's right. So uh, again, we're gonna stream that here in just a second. Uh, Andy, I think Crenshaw was um, amazing because there was so much going on yeah. in that yard, yeah. in that lumber yard. There were so many processes, there were so many, uh, and, and it wasn't really cells, but there were just so many areas of milling. Yeah. Uh, and they had to keep so much inventory straight. The amount of board feet, I forget exactly how much. I remember feet. they said they're, they're shipping out, which means they're also bringing in right. each, each week total, two locations, so this was only one of them, right. but total 2.8 million board feet. Yeah, 2.8 million board feet per week. Per week. Feel per week. They bring in, yeah. I mean, you'll see, Amazing. I think you've got shots of the railroad cars. They've got four I railroad just, cars and 30 trucks come in and go out every day. I mean, it's a, it was, it's amazing how it they're was, doing this. It was amazing. We were uh, we were toured around um, by uh, a couple gentlemen there who were very knowledgeable. They've yeah. been uh, with Crenshaw for some time. Dana and Jeff. Um, if you guys are watching, thank you so yeah, thank much you for so your much. hospitality. It we have a, great customers. Yesterday, oh, we Mark have, Nappy did an awesome excellent job. Customers. He was so yep. hospitable. Jeff and Dana were were incredibly hospi uh, hospitable. They they were they've never been on camera like that, and they did an excellent. They did a great right? job. Yeah, they were uh, they were pretty cool. And you guys will meet them in just a second when we play this video. So uh, so basically, again, this is uh, the video that we took uh, yesterday. Now. With that said, the other challenge with taking a video at really an outdoor facility um, is that the audio, the audio is oh, yeah, yeah. just noisy. It's yeah. just pretty noisy. They have a well, lot, they have a lot of, of yard lifts that are going by. They had four, yeah, they, yeah, they got all these forklifts. They got all these saws. People are moving these timbers that are, you know, Massive, 24 yeah. feet yeah. long. I mean, it was, uh, there was just a lot going on. So. Uh, at times, it's a little bit hard to hear, uh, so please excuse that. But I really think that uh, you know, for those of you who uh, are who enjoy looking at kind of the insides and the guts of a sawmill, this will be very enjoyable and very eye-opening. Yeah. yeah. Now, one thing also is that you might be saying, "Well, why was it outside?" But it's California. It's California. It's they, California. Get, they don't get as much rain, obviously. Right. So, so there's yeah. uh, there's just yeah. Uh, it was just basically all outdoors. They were saying that, we were saying, it doesn't rain here much. And they said, yeah, actually it rained just, what was it, last week? Last week for 20 for minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. and that was a lot. That was a lot of rain for them, yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so yeah, so that's why it's outside. And uh, all right, so without all that, uh, all that, uh, all this uh, fluff, we're gonna get to the actual video. We're yeah. gonna play it for you guys. Well, let's say hello to Christian in Austria. Oh, uh, hey. Christian Hashtag orange Austria. power. There you go. <laughs> so as you guys can see, there's a good amount of orange machines behind us here yeah. on, on the stream. Uh, so we're going to play that video of Crenshaw, of Crenshaw Lumber, right now for everybody. Uh, we hope that you enjoy it. If you got any questions, I'm going to be monitoring the YouTube and Facebook feed. So just put your uh, questions in the uh, comments and we'll get to them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, give me a second. That, I'm gonna we're probably going to mask back up so yeah. we can uh, comply here with the uh, with the mandates in California. I mean, uh, so also, real quick shout out to everybody here at Expo West. They've done a tremendous job yeah. putting on a safe uh, event here, and, uh, and, and we're absolutely you know, checking temperatures. We're we're making sure everybody's got on a mask. We're we got doing. a great crew out here in Southern California. If you guys want to stop by, um, you'll feel very safe stopping by. If you don't, just watch the live streams. Yeah, it's all exactly. good. All right, you ready to go? Very we'll, good. Uh, we'll uh, start streaming the Crenshaw Lumber Tour uh, right now, and we'll see you guys on the other side. All right. 
My name is Dana Stickney. I work for Crenshaw Lumber Company. I'm in operations a little bit. I do sales and primarily uh, project manager. Jeff Bender, Crenshaw Lumber Company, uh, production manager. And just tell you you're going to take a, take a long tour. We're going to take you a little tour of the yard, give you a brief overview of what we got going here, and uh, end up hopefully uh, demonstrating the newest piece of equipment we've attained, uh, the OptiCut uh, XL, which is a tremendous piece of equipment. Ready? Let's go. Well, it's a special year, you know, we really haven't stopped in roughly about three and a half, four years, did not stop. We're roughly at, as a company, 2.6, 2.7 million feet a week. Just out of this Gardena facility, we're pushing 1.6, 1.7 out of here a week. You know, good times right now. So, our primary customer target here is the National Home Builder Framing Contractor. And so we try to provide all the services that they might require from us. Uh, we remount a lot of lumber for them uh, for their exposed applications on a house. A lot of that's what you see right here with this, with this piece of equipment. We'll take smooth lumber that comes from the mill and remand it to be a rough, exposed product. This saw is doing taper rips that are used on flat roofs to give it the pitch. So these pieces, Cut on an angle. So on our way to our destination, you'll notice the various cutoff saws around the yard. The cutoff saw slash beam saw we used to cut all the way up to our 8x12s, all our glue lamps on this saw. You notice that it's fairly idle now with your interjection of the whining. Another cutoff saw. Jeff, what's the age of this saw? I'm sorry? How old is this saw? Before my time. 40 years? 40? This is our big band saw. So it does the same thing. We run big timbers through here to resize them and or to just rough up the surface so for an appearance application. So it's a big band saw. Then on the we back should walk saw, over to our unit saw real quick. That's the unit saw we were discussing earlier. This is our unit saw. We put four units in and cut them to length. This is a, this is a big chainsaw. So like I said, as you can see with the addition of the OptiCut, these cutoff so, saws aren't getting much of a workout anymore. So in order to create more efficiency in the field, we cut and package many of the elements that they use to build a house. So anything that's not your standard product, we cut that here, package it, 
and send it out to them um, per lot so that there's no confusion. They grab a, a, a unit here that was designated for lot 57. They take it right to lot 57. These are their longer studs that they might use. So. The goal is to optimize their labor on the, on the job, uh, creating efficiencies for them. And if we're really good at it, it uh, enhances our customer base because we are so good at it. As I was saying earlier, this yard has been here for about 75 years. Uh, it was primarily a dirt lot. Uh, only about 20% of it, not even 20% of it, was paved. Over the last four or five years, we basically uh, laid eight inches of concrete over 12 acres. Used to, right now, we'd be standing in um, Lake Crenshaw. In a mud hole, in a mud hole. So <laughs> that, is, uh, that has really enhanced our efficiency, uh, the longevity of our equipment, forklifts in particular. Uh, they're not out four wheeling all day. We're approaching the uh, warehouse that uh, holds the OptiCut, houses the OptiCut. On the way in, you'll notice these packages to a label. Uh, once again, these are packages uh, of header stock and cripple stock and fill stock that goes per unit uh, out to our customer. So we'll cut everything from the big timbers down to the smallest six inch piece on this saw. <laughs> oh yeah, they're blowing it going. <laughs> so process-wise, we'll load several jobs into the computer. Uh, and by jobs, we mean, for instance, a, a, a particular house. House A, House B, House C. They'll come off of the five kicker stations in the proper sequence. people in this process, now we're down to four, and we're considerably more efficient, uh, we're more accurate. The pieces that we cut were, in the past, measured with the measuring tape and marked and cut. This thing is laser guided, it cuts every piece of the exact measurement. Things are packaged nowadays with the addition of the. Your offloader is just taking a lot of guesswork out. You no longer have to mark everything by hand with a marker. That's our guys know there's going to be six pieces in this package. It takes a lot of guesswork out of it, helps them out on production. Now we have pieces coming off the saw that are going to their various stations and kick out.
our packages on the other saw that we walked past earlier, everything was cut one at a time that Mark would have marked. So that process is completely eliminated. The step is taken away. Putting your stops or saw stops where it physically had to be to cut each piece, that's all gone away. The saw's take care of everything for it. Not only are we assembling these packages with one third of the people, the accuracy of the packages, they come out perfect. So all the cuts are perfect, the pieces, and the number of pieces is right. We've got a lot of the input from our customers in the field has been tremendous. They're very happy with what they see. So what you've seen right now with these guys, gentlemen, they're cutting right now, this traditionally, all five of those saws that we walked past earlier would be doing this one single job, you know, roughly. But we're looking at, you know, 10 to 12 guys, possibly into the second shift working on this job. Four guys will knock this out, but we done before they go on the fly. Christian, let me, uh... We'll, we'll jump up and look at the brains of the uh, of the product. Ready? Get Ricky to come up. Get Ricky to come up. Or James. Watch your step. Watch your step here, Christian. Walk with them. So basically, we load units into the end of the chain. Those units will automatically come up to the off order. The off order will take a full line up, the full top layer, a full layer of whatever we put in there and bring it up to the feeder chain to the saw. Once it gets up to the saw, the sensors will sense the thickness of the material that one's fine. and adjust the pressure of the wheels to feed those pieces. They come out to the conveyor, on the way down to the saw, on their way, the sensors will look and see if there's any particular defect, and then into the saw it goes. James, this is Christian. Can you give us some, some overview of how this works? So you you've got a you've got a job like this that we produce in the office that has all the cut the lengths of whatever product we're cutting two by four two by six four by this is all entered into the computer here. James, do you uh, reference this piece while you're cutting here? So so he'll pull pull this will pull up onto the screen. James will review it. Make sure he's got the right product in the saw, and then off he goes. Pushes go, and it goes. Yeah, Ricky, give us. And so what did we just do? It's imported this list, USA list. So you just imported this list into the machine. 
that easy. All right, great. So one, once the material is loading, he finds the order number, makes sure they're down the list, and then he sets up the kickers. It's either an alternate or double kick, depending on the leg. And he just. Uh, so he sets up the kickers manually. Yes. To accommodate whatever it is that he's shoving out. I see. Okay. Run it. And run it. Okay. Thank you, James. Wish we had a piece. Can can we run a piece through here by manually? Can you run a piece through here manually so we can watch it cut? Okay. All the actions right here. Every piece will be in cut first to make a clean cut. There's a laser inside here that measures, and the back end will be cut. And those are those are pieces that are, don't go to a unit. Oh yeah. So here comes a piece. It'll end cut it, measure it, and cut it again. The blade's so fast you can't even see it. Yeah, yeah right. That's a wrap, gentlemen. Thanks for coming. Welcome to Crenshaw Lumber. Hope you enjoyed your tour. We enjoyed your visit. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, we are uh, back here live now at Expo West, uh, our showroom in Anaheim, California. Uh, we are monitoring the feed. We're live on Facebook and also on YouTube. And uh, right now I'm joined by someone who uh, came by and uh, I'm quite pleased that he did. Uh, Saul, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do. Absolutely, hi, I'm uh, Saul Martin from uh, Architecture Woodworking Company. Uh, custom cabinet shop or a uh, mill worker here in uh, Los Angeles. I've been uh, there for 28 years and uh, one of the original pieces of equipment that I learned uh, to, to work on in the shop was a Holzer edge bander. <laughs> so I'm actually here to uh, check them out and look at other equipment that uh, we could potentially purchase. So uh, how old is that bander that uh, you got there? That bander would have been really, really old. Unfortunately, <laughs> it, it, it saw better days and it's moved on. So. Oh, I but, got yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> All right. But still has a, a good place in my heart. There the, you little, go. the little holster. <laughs> so Saul, kind of tell us about like the manufacturing environment in your shop and then in your region uh, here in Southern California. Yeah, so, you know, that's the only shop I've ever worked in uh, at Architecturals, and yeah. we do all commercial case goods okay. for mill work. Yeah. Um, uh, so I did my apprenticeship there. Uh, yeah. I started off sweeping the floors 28 years ago, as I mentioned, and uh, now I run the, uh, the shop or the floor wow. downstairs. Yeah. I've had up to 50 employees. The shop is about 60,000 square feet. 
Okay. Uh, so okay. it's relatively uh, good size. That's good size for California, right? Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I haven't seen very many other shops that big uh, right, right. in California. Right. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, we have a good time. We have a lot of uh, toys to work with and, uh, and build good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Now, uh, now I believe that you know one of our uh, wine egg experts down here in Southern California, Bodo. Um, and uh, Bodo was telling me. Now, are you involved in, a, in a, an association or a, a society of manufacturers? Oh, yes. Uh, so Bodo, uh, he came down one time to the shop and he uh, was trying to. Uh, to get me to get a wine egg, and uh, I actually became the salesperson at that point because I, <laughs> I invited him to uh, join our uh, association. We're a chapter of AWFS. Oh, okay, right. Uh, so yep. we have Society of Wood Manufacturing, uh, SWIM for short. SWIM. And yes. Now, and SWIM stands for what? One Society of Wood Manufacturing. Oh, uh, okay, great. Uh, yeah. So we basically are trying to get industry professionals. Uh, manufacturers and mm -hmm. educators to work together so that we can get the, the educators to support their students and give them an, give them any advice that we uh, professionals and industry professionals can give them so that we can get their students back into the industry Wow uh, yeah. so we're uh, we've done a lot of functions so uh, uh, one of our lumber suppliers here in Los Angeles donated a bunch of lumber and we got about 25 teachers to come out and pick up lumber for the students. That's great. Uh, so, you know, we do as much as we can to uh, promote education. Yes. Uh, I think yes, it's important right. to, uh, to keep the woodworking industry alive and the only way we're going to do that is through our educators. Agreed. At the local high schools and uh, middle schools, college. So that's what I was just going to ask you. So when we're talking about students, what ages are we talking about? Uh, initially, we started off with high school students, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, they're from ninth grade to 12th grade. But uh, lately, I've been, we've been trying to get into middle school so that we could get them attracted to building stuff uh, at an early yeah. age. Right. Uh, which you know they're essentials as you you know as you get older and you buy your own home or what have you you know how to swing a hammer and hold a screwdriver and yep. what have you uh, I, I think that's all important and and it's a it's it's it was it's important to me now because uh, I learned it when I was at that age you know right. I was sure, wrenching sure. and working on stuff with my dad's tools getting in trouble and so <laughs> not that we want the, the the young folks getting in trouble but you know <laughs> have fun build stuff you know absolutely be a maker right be absolutely a, be yeah. a maker and I think that that message uh, you know holds true nowadays just as much as it did back then even though I think so much of uh, I guess so much of our society Society is going digital there's a satisfaction in making something tangible isn't there absolutely uh, when I go home and as a matter of fact I <clears throat> excuse me I use it as a stress reliever now yes, more than anything because right? when I'm on yeah. a computer working on AutoCAD or uh -huh. writing programs what have you I go home and I jump on my little mini day lathe and I you know turn a pen or <laughs> do something it just kind of helps me relax uh, right. more than anything else oh agreed Agreed, absolutely. And I've always, I've always thought that just one of the things that, uh, you know, one of the things that we're just meant to do, we're, we're meant to take something and make those things into something else. That there is just something innate about that that gives us, uh, as human beings, uh, satisfaction and, a, you know, a, a sense of accomplishment. Yeah, the funny thing is I find myself buying stuff at the store and then modifying it for my personal needs. Is that right? Uh, whether the table's too tall, I want it <laughs> shorter, or I'll add to it, make a drawer for a case. Yeah. So I'm always, you know, modifying it for my needs, you Abs know, uh, which, you know, having a skill uh, definitely helps yes. as opposed to, you know, going to the neighbor, hey, man, can you build this for me? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> or... Or having to go to the store and getting something that then you're stuck with. Yeah. You're just like, okay, well, this is it is what it is. Yeah, uh, it is definitely nice and freeing to have that ability to uh, modify or even build from scratch your own furniture or your own uh, home improvement projects or whatever that may be. Yeah, and so uh, as a woodworker, I, I totally love this trade because uh, you know wood is so malleable and you it could is. make it into anything that you want. Um, yeah. So and and I. And I, you know, I suggest or, or I wish that everybody try out woodworking. 
uh, and you'll fall in love with it. Okay, I, se I second that. Absolute, <laughs> absolutely. It wasn't until I started working in the industry that I, and, and that's, tr I think, true for a lot of people, right? Because it's not, it's not something that a 24-year-old uh, just gets into yeah. haphazardly. Um, unless they're involved in something like swim and then you know then you bring it to them but you know i didn't start until i was in the industry and and uh yeah i recommend it for everyone there's just something about working with uh wood and being able to modify the shape and just really just seeing how it reacts to your tools and uh it, different species and once you start getting into working with different species then it's a whole nother game right oh because absolutely yes why is my chisel so dull now yeah. well, you don't <laughs> use it on that wood that's, that's exactly right it's like well you know i was able to screw these two pieces of pine together why isn't it working with hickory and then you start learning about you know the density of the wood and uh you know what goes together and what doesn't and yeah it's uh it's eye-opening for sure I, so um, before I was with Weinig, I, I, I worked at a turning manufacturer, and you mentioned you know uh, doing some home turnings on the lathe. So and um, and that was really my first job in the industry, and it it was uh, it was just it was an awakening moment when I when I realized basically what we were doing, which was um, you know way before it ever got to the lathe that I was turning on, right? It started as a tree. It started as a trunk, which was round, you know, and then that trunk went to a mill and it got sawed up into rectangles. And then the rectangles were glued together to make a square, put on my lathe, and I just made it round again, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I made I a mean, full circle. Just, right, exactly. <laughs> and there's so many processes that everything around us made out of wood go through, uh, and it's pretty cool. And then to be on the machinery side of things, seeing how machines are set up, to specifically mill a piece of wood into a specific purpose. Oh yeah, it's it's amazing when you watch a CNC router uh, going through its X, Y axes and cutting all these all right, yeah. very intricate parts. And it's yeah. like, wow, that's amazing, you know? The guy who invented that must have had a huge head. <laughs> <laughs> Super smart. Right, right. <laughs> that's true. That took, took a lot of people a lot of years to, to come up with that, but now that it's come up with this, it, commonplace in shops, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. You, uh, you see it everywhere. You see the small little mini CNC routers, which is it's great. It's so available to everybody. You go to any uh, uh, woodworking store and pick up a small CNC, and you can start building a lot of stuff. And yeah. the programs are so user friendly now. Absolutely. It's amazing. I mean, it's so feasible for anybody to build something custom. It's, Absolutely. It's uh, yes, 100%. Now, so I want to also ask you because, uh, you know, uh, right before you came and sat down, we were talking about your shop. Uh, there and you were saying how you guys work with veneers and i think that's something that not not all of the industry really understands because you know a lot you know a lot of people either work with solid wood or they work with panel stock um but they may not be laying up veneer you know uh so can you tell us a little bit about that what do you guys specifically do um uh, mm -hmm. there yeah so a lot of the millwork that we do will consist of like an entire floor uh, and if, okay. it's, if you have that much millwork, it's almost impossible to find so many logs that will have the same characteristics in the so wood. So true. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So what we do is we purchase uh, logs, one log of veneer, and we'll use all that veneer for that floor so it all matches sequentially. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can lay up your veneer, whether it's a book match, slip match, end match on the length of the elevation. And, uh, and we like, we, we, we love using veneer because we can get more out of it Absolutely. and the job looks cleaner it's just uh it's easier to control the finish yep. because you don't have all the different varying pieces everything uh all the material will take the stain the same way right uh, so a lot of consistency and yes uh, at the shop we have our own equipment to uh, cut the veneer to width oh, to length okay. yep. uh, to yep. splice the veneer together and we have a hot press where we hot press our panels. So um, what do you guys use normally as the core of your panel that you put veneer on? You know, most people use chip core, yeah. but okay. I, we, because we do a lot of work in downtown Los Angeles, we use okay. FSC MDF. Really? So yeah, okay. so um, wow. I, we go to the next level only because we do run a lot of quirks, which is uh, 
an eighth by an eighth cut as a reveal that uh, separates the panels or there's a detail and being a, if you were to make it out of chip core you couldn't you wouldn't have a good inside square edge uh, and right. mdf okay. provides sure. that for us absolutely so we take no, it to the sure. next level so. okay okay yeah so that's the majority of that's the majority of the core there yeah yeah so i would say 98 percent of everything we make is going to be mdf core okay all right yeah. Hey, so listen, everybody, if you guys are just joining us, we are live from our showroom uh, here, Expo West, we call it. This is our showroom in Anaheim, California. And uh, we are just, uh, we're just live streaming uh, from our open house event uh, today. Um, if you guys are just joining us, uh, we just um, played a uh, video that from a tour that we did yesterday at Crenshaw Lumber. Um, and uh, you guys can go back and watch that. And right now, uh, we're just talking to folks uh, that, uh, that joined us, uh, like Saul. So, uh, yeah, so uh, welcome if you're just joining us. Saul, can you tell us a little bit about your clientele in uh, LA? Uh, yeah, we do a lot of tenant improvement in the buildings in downtown LA or on the west side. Uh, we've done uh, some work over here in Orange County, PIMCO. We've okay. done work for yeah. Warner Brothers, Paramount wow. Pictures, yeah. um, a lot of, I've seen a lot of our work in movies, so because uh, we do a lot of law firms. How does that feel when you're oh. watching a movie and you're like, yeah, I remember that going through the shop? Yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like you have to take a second look. It's like, wait, that's what I did, you know? Right, and, uh, right, right. It feels really good, you know, okay. when, when you see your stuff. We see a lot of our product on uh, on the woodworking magazines or not uh, Architectural Digest and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. So, oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, we work sure. with uh, some pretty good law f um, architectural firms that have a lot of pool in the, in the city of Los Angeles. I gotcha. So uh, we're fortunate in that regard. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. All right, so uh, so real quick before we close out, Saul, so one more time, um, tell everyone watching uh, your uh, company, uh, contact information, how they can uh, see some of your work, etc. Uh, yeah, so my name is Saul Martin, Architectural Woodworking Company. Um, you can reach me at smartin at awc, as in cat, la.com. Um, and if you just go to awcla.com, you can see all of our product and so you guys uh, what have, we've done. You guys have a cool gallery online? That oh, absolutely, you can see. yes. Yeah. So you can see all of our work that we've all done right. there. So check it out. And uh, after, we, uh, after we cut the stream, I'll, uh, I'll put a link to their website. Um, right in the uh, description of this video so uh, you can go over there and check out Saul and his team's work uh, right here in LA so uh, it's great great to see some West Coast manufacturers today yeah uh, get to talk to you guys and uh, that's awesome so listen everybody we are going to uh, we're gonna cut the stream and uh, we're gonna start again here uh, momentarily we're a little bit behind schedule but that's all right so we're gonna uh, we're gonna start streaming again in about 10, 15 minutes, uh, and uh, Bodo, uh, Bodo Lil, our Weinig expert uh, down here in Southern California, is gonna show everybody uh, a little bit of profiling work on the molder. And so, uh, like I said, we're gonna cut the stream now, and we'll be back streaming live in about 10, 15 minutes. All right, Saul, thanks for joining us, man. It's Thank been you a pleasure.